Now, I'm delighted to say that sitting opposite me in the studio for the very first time, Mr. Richard Tice. How nice it's, to see you in person. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, Mike. Thanks for having me. I mean, just A, the studio is amazing, but yeah. just to be back in a studio yeah. is so extraordinary. Isn't it, it is a sign, finally, mm. albeit we're a lot older, yes. of some form of progress. Yes, exactly right. Last time I saw you was somewhere over near Borough Market, I think, a couple of uh, months, well, actually probably five months ago. I know. Because we forget how time has flown. Time has flown. When You're we've looking been... younger, by the way. Well, I don't that's know how very you good. Maybe it's the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, no, I mean, this is, uh, you know, we, we're in the middle of sort of what's going to be two or three days of results. And yeah. it is it is quite extraordinary uh, what is going on. Yeah. Really, um, you know, obviously Hartlepool was very dear to my heart, yeah. is very dear to my heart. And, and you came very close to winning it last yeah, time. Yeah, you know, we came, we came, we really fought a massive, massive campaign. We didn't quite get there. Uh, you know, I know it very well. And, you know, I've been up there. Uh, at the beginning of this campaign, before sort of mm. campaigning in London, yeah. what people were telling me very clearly, and I could see the direction of travel, was that basically they'd had enough of Labour's waffle mm. and, and words, yeah. but what they really wanted was Boris's money. Yes. They'd seen uh, you know large cheques being given, being written, potentially mm. written to towns that have voted, uh, voted Tory in the north, yeah. and voters were saying, look, actually, I agree with you, but I need some of Boris's money, mm. so I'm going to go all the way across. And what, they, what they'd done, Labour voters, and, and, you know, Hartlepool is a core, core Labour town, sure, uh, and an amazing town, having sort of bridged over to the Brexit party for the European elections and for the general election And for Brexit to be done yeah, as well. they sort of found that having lent their vote, actually, A, it wasn't painful, and B, actually, they realised, well, we can go a bit further mm. to make sure we get Boris's money. So this was all about getting Boris's money and and in a sense that's what uh, that's what happened and, and you know as, as you've said earlier it, the Labour Party to to select as their candidates not only a Remainer who wanted a second referendum but the other thing was they there are two key issues in mm. Hartlepool one was was it was a, a, the biggest leave voting constituency yeah. the second thing was they lost their hospital right and the bloke they selected Paul Williams was the guy who recommended the closure of the hospital. And he was a doctor, I think. He well, was a doctor. He? he wrote the report recommending yeah. shutting down most of the hospital's key services. And that's the guy they, they yeah. selected. So they were just miles away from the reality of, of what concerned uh, the well, good exactly. people of Hartlepool. I mean, you know, when you're sort of introducing Peter Mandelson, the former MP, as an endorsing uh, a candidate, an endorsement for your candidacy, you kind of go, well, yeah. that ship sailed quite a long so time it's, ago. I mean, to get that, uh, that majority that the Conservatives have got is extraordinary. Mm. And, and essentially, all the rest just disappeared. So, and why sure, do you think we would, we, I mean, you put, had, a, you had a candidate. Yeah, we had a great candidate, there. John Prescott, and look, we would have loved to have got more. He worked incredibly hard. But mm. basically, everybody wanted to guarantee that they got rid of Labour in yeah. Hartlepool. And so everybody else w was basically doomed. And so, you know, we pay the price. Look, essentially, we're creating a new brand, Reform yeah. UK, from a standing start at the back end of mm. a pandemic. And it's really, really yes. difficult. I mean, we forget, it's only two months ago. We weren't sure these elections were going to take place. Right. So, uh, yes, we've got a lot of work to do. But what it's really interesting what is happening in, in politics because... Uh, essentially, Labour have they've gone in Scotland. That's finished. Yeah, they're done. not coming back. They're not coming back. Uh, they are disappearing fast in the north of England, mm. and so essentially, the north of England is now in play. Uh, for and all some sorts of the council people. gains, which are being projected yes. at the moment, looking to be about fifty-nine gains for for, for the Tories, yeah. fifty-eight losses and, for and Labour. A lot of those are in places you wouldn't think that you wouldn't happen. think so. And we've we've gained a couple of council seats mm. in Derby from Labour, for example. Okay. So. And again, from a standing start, so you think, you know, there's, there's stuff shifting mm. going on. And it's really interesting because uh, there's going to be another by-election in Batley and Spence, yes. obviously a Labour heartland, uh, supposedly, um, where the majority has been much smaller than Hartlepool. And that's likely to take place most likely September mm. because Tracy Braben is, is probably going to win the West Yorkshire mayoralty and right. she has to stand down. So that's going to be in place. So there's going to be a huge focus on that. There's we'll definitely be... a, a, uh, there's definitely an appetite, I think, for a change of, of, of view in, in the political landscape because effectively at the moment we live in a one-party country, don't we? A one-party state with the, the Tories look unassailable, right? Well, we, So if, we... you've got, if you've got no opposition to that, then you need to find an opposition to it, don't you? Correct, because, I mean, let's be honest, a one-party state is not healthy. No. And what we've seen recently with a sort of dictatorial, authoritarian... Uh, party mm. with an 80 seat majority I think it's now 81 seat majority yeah. 
uh, you know, that is that actually is not healthy. And, and the electorate won't tolerate that for that mm. long. Yeah. And so I think that, uh, you know, the opportunity actually is emerging because what, what the Labour Party, so what the Conservatives have done, they've essentially drifted left. Mm. They are now the party of high spending, uh, high taxation, yeah. Uh, the, the low green growth, revolutions, the, 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 a massive green agenda where the bills have not yet come. But when the bills mm. start to come from uh, the taxes that Rishi has, has promised to increase in a couple of years time yeah. uh, for everybody, including the lowest paid. Yeah. Um, when those bills come, when the, the bills come for the green agenda and they're on the left and they've essentially sort of t stolen the Labour Party's ground. That's where we at Reform UK see the opportunity mm. to the right of centre say, actually, we're the party of low taxation, yeah. simple taxation, high growth, personal responsibility, strong belief in mm. the culture and values of Britain and yeah. being British. We think that's the opportunity. But at the moment... And the things actually that a lot of the people who have moved over to the Tories in the North actually want, because I had an interesting call today from Dan in Epsom, who's a regular caller to our show, uh, and he said what's, what he sees is a lot of people moving to the, to the Tory party from Labour, but a lot of older Tory voters yes. who have traditionally voted Tory not being that satisfied with what they're getting. It was, it was a very interesting call. I did hear it. And... I think the other thing, when the bill, when people have to start paying the mm. the dramatic increase in tax bills, yeah. uh, that we don't actually believe in necessary. We think you should be going for growth, putting the foot flat on the accelerator. Uh, uh, a bit like what they've done in America. Mm. They, they, you know, they've done a major stimulus package. Uh, but the Tories are not going to do that. They're going to go for an austerity. And but when, they're putting taxes up in America as well, though, aren't they? Yeah, the, Although they are they're now, lower they than ours. Now, they are now, but they are much lower than ours. And we haven't seen that. So, you know, it, it, the opportunity will emerge... It, from one to three years out. And mm. let's remember the general election is only three years away. Right. So, yeah, it's a very interesting time, but the the gap is going to emerge to the right of centre. And I just don't see where the Labour Party goes. Well, I think they're eating themselves. And I think, you know, the more kind of concentric they become, and they they literally all end up in a church in Putney, <laughs> you know, which, of course, is no longer a church because they don't believe in religion, because well, that would be so that would be well, awful. Uh, but, you know, there'll be 10 of them all sitting there going, what should we do now? You yeah, know, that's and, kind of and, the way it's going. And, 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 and as we saw, you know, the Met Police will probably arrest the preachers <laughs> for standing outside the church preaching, reading yes, from the gospel. Absolutely um, right. But, but that's this is, another but story. But this is the thing. I mean, I think this is, and this is an important point that I've been trying to make today as well, that this whole Woke agenda is not at all in line with most people's thinking in this country. Most people could not give a stuff about whether or not there are 78,000 genders. You know, most people think there are only two. You know, most people actually tell their children, you know, uh, if you want to be a girl, but you are born a boy, uh, maybe we should have a conversation about that rather than actually giving them drugs to do it. You know, these are very minority issues and very minority interests. And most people in the country just want to make a living, yep. put a roof over their heads, as Kevin O'Sullivan said, have a holiday in Spain, have a, a car outside and have no problem from the government. Completely. And um, the, the thing is to remember, what do people talk about in the pub, the yeah. fish and chip shop, the curry house, you know, or in the home with a couple of mates yeah. uh, around a beer watching the football. And and, and the tr the Labour Party, uh, they, they haven't done that. They haven't checked out what, what, what those discussions mm. are for a very long time. And that's why they're completely losing the plot. And, you know, most people, as you say, they, you know, they, they want to be, make sure they can get a job. They're paying a sensible amount of tax. And as you say, they can go on holiday and, and do the things, but also have the freedoms to do that. Mm. And I think that's one of the big things... And, and, and nobody understands half of these woke words. I mean, no. who on earth knows what critical race theory is, for God's no. sake? I know. You know it's, it's, it's just... Um, White privilege. What is all this stuff? Yeah, I know. You know no, no, no one knows. No one cares. Most people around the country don't actually know what does woke mean. Where yeah. did that word come from? Yeah, I know. You know. Well, lately I've been getting attacked by people who say, I don't know what it means. And actually, woke is a good thing to be. And therefore, the fact that you think it's a bad thing shows that you're a bad person. <laughs> and I'm going, do you know how much I care about what you've just said? You know, put yourself in the bin and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. You yeah. know, most people are too busy to get on with their lives to actually sit around talking about this rubbish. Completely. And I think it, as the more that people in the Labour Party and the Liberals, uh, what they call themselves progressive, you know, actually the progress most people want to see is they want to know that they continue to earn a job, mm. uh, that they're not giving too much of that to the government, and they can progress to going back on holiday and yeah. to being able to, uh, you know, to, to afford to, uh, to buy a car when, when the current one... Uh, you know, is is uh, is no more, and, and that's those yeah. are the key I mean, there things are some that people are really, really let's talk, keen Let's on. talk a bit about your campaigning in London because you've been running for for a seat. Um, I don't know when you find out how that's. You're yeah, finding out through the course of today and tomorrow. Look, the, the London Assembly and the mayoral elections. There've been a huge number of candidates. Mm. 
And I so, couldn't believe how many. There's yeah, like it's a huge number. So in London. For, for the uh, for outside the main two parties, it's going to be difficult for mm. all of us because essentially the vote just gets massively uh, diluted. Yes. Uh, so, and again, you know, we're, we're essentially relaunching the brand. Right. So we always knew that it was going to be difficult, but this mm. is the start of a journey. Uh, we've got, but amazingly, you see, next year in London, there are 1,800 council seats up for okay. grabs. So literally next week, you know, actually the work starts now mm. uh, for that. And uh, so, yeah, you know, the, the results will be what the results will be. And, uh, you know, because that, because the, that is the kind the of, yeah, because that is the kind of anomaly, isn't it? Where you have somebody like Sadiq Khan, uh, who continually refuses to come on this show, and I don't think he's even been on the station, uh, but likes to go on other places where they give him a softer time. You know, a man who has, who has run London into the ground, uh, who has ruined the streets of, of the city, uh, caused congestion all over the place with these low uh, traffic zones, uh, and all of the bike lanes, also it's, knife crime up massively, it's, gun it's crime up massively. I mean, but yet he will be re elected. He will be re elected because London is a massively divided divided city now yeah. and he's actually exaggerated that division with for example the ULES extension that's yeah. due to come in October I think there's going to be real trouble when those bills come in right because it affects the least well off you know well it affects the working man and it, woman. it affects the working man and woman who want to get on and if you can't afford a a car that's less than five years old or a van that's less than five years old you are going to get hit with some massive bills mm. so we were hearing that big loud and clear uh, during the campaigning and yet he's going to he is going to uh, win there's no doubt about mm. that and, and is that the because the labor is, machine in london is so good or, well or what? It, it is very good and of course uh, you know he gets a lot um, places like tower hamlets and there were some extraordinary things we saw yesterday mm. in tower hamlets yeah uh, and and some really gray areas of electoral law so uh, we, we've always understood and the conservatives have always understood that you can't campaign outside a polling station yeah we went. We were doing a tour of a number of polling stations. I saw a video over, from David and Bull. David yeah. Bull, and there we are. We've got you've got Labour activists uh, campaigning, handing out leaflets, showing people how to vote, and whilst they're queuing up to go in the polling station, mm. we spoke to the uh, the electoral services offer at Tower Hamlets. This is grey. This is it's it's very unclear. The Labour Party think it's allowed. Okay. Uh, the rest of us think it's not allowed. We, we will ask to get clarity on that because everybody needs to know whatever the rules. But it, if if that was allowed and sensible, why wouldn't everybody be yeah. there? Completely ha harassing and absolutely. Handy? You know why would you? I mean, are they claiming? Weeks are they, are they, the are they claiming that they're out there exit polling or something? Uh, no, no, no. no they're, 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 they're not claiming. They're saying it's within the rules to campaign outside a polling station. The other thing that really worries us, mm. and this is this is really important. So, for example, uh, the, is the the size of the postal vote. And yes, we've had a pandemic, and so it, the postal vote is big. Mm. But take Doncaster mayor election. 28% was the turnout, mm. of which 60% is postal votes. Wow. So there we are in Tower Hamlets, waiting outside the polling station, and some gentleman comes along with a stack of postal votes yeah. in his hand right. to take into the polling station. Now, surely the clue is in the name. If it's a postal vote, why haven't you posted it? Yeah. Right? You would have thought so. Why, 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 why do you need someone? Than, and also, why is there more than one? Why is there more than one? So then you think, then we hear a Labour councillor proudly say, oh yes, we've heard stories of other people pretending to be councillors, mm. going around houses uh, on the streets, um, helping people how to vote. Uh, and then saying, I can take it in for your postal vote. Right. If you want. I mean, so there's some, there's some really there's important... There's certainly some questions. There's some real questions that need to be answered. There's some, some clarity. Mm. We've got deep concerns around postal voting. The Labour Party, without question the best at having uh, essentially sort of grown the size yeah. of that. We saw some stuff that we didn't like at all in Peterborough in the by-election. Well, one of the stories that, that people were, were giving us a hard time about just before the election, they were saying, you know, um, what about all these Labour councillors that have been suspended? What about this trouble that's uh, that's happening up in Peterborough? And, of course, we were not really able to go there no, before the election because we have people don't always understand it. You get an election well, period I, where we can't talk to people like you if you're a candidate well, unless we talk to every other candidate. I know, no, I know. It's, you know. It's, it's really difficult for you guys. and I know you do your valiant job. Uh, to try and extract some common sense. But we were looking out on the street mm. yesterday and what we saw was not common sense. What we saw is practice that looks um, at best grey, yeah. at worst seriously dodgy. Yes. And we will be calling it out and asking the Electoral Commission uh, to to give some proper clarity mm. so that everybody's playing by the same rules. That's Absolutely. all we, what we want to do. We think postal votes is, uh, you know, it, it needs a, a serious look. Um, there are plans for, for people to have ID cards when you go into a polling station, because at the moment, you could be anybody. Mm. And again... I don't you know, see that why is, that can't happen. Well, it, 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 it really should happen. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, uh, you don't know who somebody is, mm. 
And, you know, we, we're supposed to be the, one of the greatest democracies in the world. And let's stand up and be proud and strong and proudly be able to say, yes, we really are. Yeah. At the moment, from things I'm seeing, we are far, far from that. And they're asking for people to identify themselves again to a pub. I mean, you think you would want no. them to uh, no. then interview them, to, uh, in, in, you know, identify well, them. Well, that's, to a, go that's into a, a whole different ballgame. Now, um, I wanted to ask you about that because that's one of the things that we, we also couldn't do, that you and Lawrence Fox are apparently going to buy a pub and open it up for the sort of the freedom. That's right. The, the, the Fox and Tice, we've got people <laughs> combing central London. Right. If any of your listeners have got some ideas, yeah. um, we were looking to, you know, as our commitment to reopening London to get the place going again, mm. we want to buy a pub or a restaurant somewhere that's got a license yeah. near the centre, yeah. and we want to brand it the Fox and Tice, and it will be the, it'll be the home of free speech, yes. of right wing comedy, uh, things that you can't normally do because of the woke brigade won't mm. allow you to do it, right. and where you can you can have your own tankard. Um, there we think it, where where the only. Great. Let be British food, mm -hmm. and we're absolutely clear: no vaccine Couple passports. Couple of union jacks knocking about. Plenty of union jacks knocking about. No vaccine passports. <laughs> no masks, and open for as long as we possibly can be. And you and Lawrence uh, sort of got together, didn't yes, you, so, for this campaign? That's so right. So, will that continue? Yeah. So we uh, we endorse each other. Uh, we get on well, and yeah, once we see the results then we'll have a, a, a chat and see what we think is the right thing to do mm. for the future. Because, you know, we know that actually there is a huge appetite uh, to, uh, to present a proper challenge, a, a, a challenge that represents the issues of, of freedoms, of belief in the individual, individual responsibility, mm. of, of proper British values and culture that seems to be completely lost. And, you know, Lawrence has had a huge reception he was going around it'll be interesting to see what what he gets but obviously it, it, it's really difficult mm. campaigning in this so yeah these are these are key things and and we're going to be banging the drum that actually we you know we don't need a world of high taxation high regulations mm. trust the people trust the common sense and actually you know put money in people's pockets yes so that because, because the individual and the small business will always spend a pound in their pocket and get better value and more productivity than a bowler-hatted civil servant yes. spending this it on is your the, behalf. This is the worry, isn't it, about what's happened during the lockdown, that the government has, seek, has sought to become a bigger organisation, has sought to take more money out of the private sector, put it into the public sector, you know, people being told, oh, why don't you retrain and join the NHS? Well, what if I don't want to join the NHS? What if I don't want to be a public sector worker and I want to actually run well, my own business? Well, these are, these are the things, as we see, as we come out of, uh, you know, the hideous uh, COVID crisis, and we see what's left. Actually, there are, there are many other things, apart from re reforming the economy and the tax system, which we want to do. We've got to reform our public mm. institutions, our public services. Yeah, they need to work more efficiently and faster. And when people see the state of the NHS, mm. you know, actually, it is, you, you've got cancer patients, 400,000, who may have to wait a year yeah. for treatment. We know where that ends. Yes. Sadly, that does not We've end well. We've been talking to people for the last two weeks who can't see their GP, who haven't seen a GP for a year because the GP's not open. There doesn't seem to be anyone telling the GPs to open their doors and get on with what they're yeah. supposed so, to be So to we're do. going to be coming up with proposals in the summer mm. how we need to reform our public services, in particular... Uh, how we've got to reform health, because we've got to be ambitious. Mm. Look, the reality is, why do we accept any waiting lists? Many other developed countries yeah. around the world, there's no such thing. Right. And and yet we've got people who are going to have to wait for months to see a consultant, and then months more to get treatment, by which time the illness or something may well have got, sadly, yeah. far, far worse. It's totally unacceptable. We need to be ambitious as a nation and say, we want zero, zero waiting lists. Right, if that's the objective, how do you get there? Mm. What do you need to do? So that's one of the reforms. And then I don't think people want a nanny state controlling their lives no, or a bloated, wasteful really BBC telling you what you've got to think. I'm sorry to talk about another broadcaster no, that's right. on your as fine channel. No, as long as you're disparaging. Well, fine. <laughs> and, 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 you know, likewise, uh, there's other things we want to do. I mean, you know, the, the unelected House of Lords yeah. really isn't, uh, the, the, and it's the second largest legislative it's huge, chamber in the world yeah. now. Behind the, uh, the, you know, the the Chinese National Yeah, there's Congress. fewer there's fewer people in the Indian Congress, you know, which has got billions of people living there. I mean, it's unbelievable. It, what about the pesky French fishermen? We've got to talk about. Well, that. I mean, this has been. I mean, it's like comedy hasn't time. It? Isn't I mean, it? it's it's just been hysterical. I had my I've got my app called Vessel Finder, and I was watching. We it were with all amusement. on that. Everyone it was, was just it. extraordinary. And then as they got there, all of a sudden, about turn lads. Yeah. <laughs> but also, the great thing was when they sent their so-called military boat. They were the Sky News people were were playing this up like it was going to be the next 
next sort of Battle of Trafalgar, right? They sent a boat which was made of wood, which belongs to the French Coast Guard, <laughs> uh, which had less firepower than one of those ribs that goes up and down the river with a special boat service. You know, they were not going to intimidate two British frigates. It was extraordinary. Look, the reality is that I don't think they were being serious. They're playing to their domestic yeah. uh, electorate in France yeah. because obviously Macron's got huge problems. The idea of cutting off uh, another sovereign, yeah. part of another Incredible. sovereign state from election, utterly extraordinary. But it does highlight the issues of self-resilience, which we've seen in so mm. many different areas through this COVID crisis, whether it's we don't make enough of our own medicines, mm. we don't manufacture enough of our own vaccines, yeah. and we've allowed ourselves to become completely trapped by this just-in-time delivery. Yeah. Who knew, for example, um, talking of electricity, that literally the Chinese... They control the distribution of electricity across the whole of London, the whole of South East really? England. They could turn the lights out, mm. including in number 10, yeah. at the flick of a switch. It's owned by a Chinese company. Sure. And as you know, Chinese companies have to answer mm. when required to the Chinese state. So these are these, these issues, you know, who is in control? Right. And, and we as an independent sovereign nation need to be in control of critical parts of our infrastructure and critical parts mm. of our daily lives, including... Who actually controls yeah. the power? Well, most of the power the companies are now not not British at all. I mean, Scottish power is owned by the Spanish. Uh, EDF, of course, is French. That's I mean, right. I don't think I, well, I, mean, I don't have to go to Dale Vince uh, and get Eco But about the point the about British, EDF, was, uh, stuff EDF sold uh, they sold UKPN mm. to the Chinese yeah. a number of years ago, and it's just completely passed us all by. Yeah. But actually, the French have done us a favour because they've highlighted that we must not allow our critical utilities and things to be owned and controlled by overseas nations. Mm. You know, because at a time of crisis, you've got to be in charge of your own right. destiny, folks. And if these are the kinds of things that happen when you have a one-party state, because the government thinks they can get away with whatever they like. Like, I mean, people have still been having a go at me for Boris and his curtains. But, I mean, you know, if it turns out that he's scuppered himself because he couldn't say no to carry, you know, that's going to be the only way he gets out of office. So it doesn't matter if he doesn't get, if he's got a Labour party, it's worthless. If he behaves like an idiot and does something stupid, he's gone. Yes, but actually, that, do you know, that just wasn't what we were hearing uh, out campaigning. There was just none of that. Oh, so I know people don't care about it, it but it matters of, if, he's done, if he's done wrong. It, it, it matters, uh, and it particularly, you know, it matters around Westminster, uh, but out on the streets, you know, people would um, are much more excised, and they will get ever more excised mm. about how they run their daily lives, the freedoms they have. People are sick and tired of lockdown. Yeah. They want out of it. They want these, well, a big chunk of people want the masks off. I'm still astonished. Yeah. How many people coming, who've been vaccinated yeah. are still walking around with masks on, utterly terrified, uh, you know, because of the because continuing of the propaganda. Pro yeah, propaganda and, awful. But, you know, I, I think it really is important that, that as we go forwards, you're saying, no, we're in charge. We can make these decisions mm. ourselves. I, I think all this nonsense with Boris, it irritates, it irritates us all mad, yeah. but it's priced into Boris. Yeah. And actually, people sitting in a pub, they're having a chat, they talk about why they're going on holiday, and they think Boris is a bit of a laugh. Yeah. But they know what whatever anybody thinks of Boris, you know, he does believe in in Britain. He does believe that we're a great sovereign nation who you know who can do well, and mm. we believe that. You believe it. We at Reform UK believe it. On that sense, you know, we're, we're I all alive. I did say yesterday. I can't imagine Theresa May sending two gunboats to Jersey. Can you? No, not. I mean, that would not, never have happened. No, no except not a for meeting. Not a cat in hell's chance. <laughs> Uh, you know, she, she wouldn't have known how to spell gunboat. No, exactly so, right. Uh, no, it, it was was extraordinary. I actually think the French have done us a favour. Mm. It highlights that we can't be dependent on other sovereign states to decide whether or not we can turn on the lights in the mm. morning. It's just completely unacceptable. We've got, and it, it's the same with, with our nuclear power stations. We shouldn't be letting the Chinese design, operate, finance and build these things, for heaven's sake. We've got to do that ourselves. Mm. I mean, that's the definition of utter madness. Mm. And, you know, you've heard Nigel talk about that. We'll be talking about that. These are the risks uh, to, to, to the strength and independence of a sovereign nation. And we've got to control all these things ourselves. It's, it's, it's unacceptable to be over-reliant you know, on critical things uh, to overseas nations, however much we may love them. We all love going on holiday in France and drinking a bit of French wine, mm. although the quality of English wine, of course, it is. Is, is improving. I am just slightly disappointed, sitting here in your glorious studio, yeah. that there is no... Uh, bottles that we could taste because very often during the week you're tasting well, well you should have come here you should have been here yesterday well i wasn't invited well but. all right well we'll do it next thursday if you like we'll be doing plenty of that we've still got some in the fridge actually richard tice uh, talking an awful lot of sense you see if you think just because the labor party's dead and buried politics is finished it's not there's a whole new chapter opening up there's a whole new era opening up and we'll be with it every step of the way here at talk radio richard great to see you thank you very thank much you. indeed this is talk radio